Hello, welcome to the Data Structure and Algorithms online tutorial video. In the last video, we learned about the queues and operations of queues and in this video, we will discuss about the types of queues in detail. There are four types of queues and they are simple queue or linear queue, circular queue, priority queue and doubly ended queue. We will learn one by one each one of them in detail. The first one is simple queue or linear queue. It strictly follows FIFO principle. Insertion takes place from one end while the deletion occurs from the another end. As we already know that the end where insertion takes place is called rear end and the end from where deletion takes place is called front end. The major disadvantage of using the linear queue is that the insertion is done only from the rear end. If the first elements are deleted from the queue, we cannot insert more elements even though space is available in a linear queue. In this case, the linear queue shows the overflow condition as the rear is pointing to the last element of the queue. Here is the representation of the simple or linear queue. As you can see in the diagram, the queue is having four elements. First, second, third and fourth. First element is representing the front end. Fourth element is representing the rear end. As we already know that the simple queue follows strictly FIFO principle that is the first in first out principle and the elements can be inserted only from the rear end. Circular queue. In the circular queue all the nodes are represented as a circular form. It is similar to the linear queue except that the last element of the queue is connected to the first element. It is also known as a ring buffer as all ends are connected to the another end. Here you can see the representation of the circular queue. The last element of the queue is connected to the first element. Queue overcomes the drawback of the linear queue. If the empty space is available in a circular queue, the new element can be added in an empty space by simply incrementing the value of rare. The main advantage of using the circular queue is better memory utilization. Next we will see priority queue. The elements are arranged based on the priority. If the elements occur with the same priority, they will be arranged according to the FIFO principle. Priority queue is mainly used to implement the CPU scheduling algorithms. There are two types of priority queues, ascending and descending priority queue. Here you can see the representation of the queue. Insertion in the priority queue takes place based on the arrival, while the deletion in the priority occurs based on the priority. Here you can see in the diagram that we have taken an example of decreasing priority order and the element with the highest priority is 78. Let us understand the diagram with types of priority queues. In ascending priority queue, the elements can be inserted in arbitrary order, but only the smallest element can be deleted first. Suppose an array with the elements 78, 60, 50, 40 and 30 in the same order, so inserting can be done with the same sequence, but the order of deleting the elements is 30, 40, 50, 60 and 78. In descending priority queue, the elements can be inserted in arbitrary order, but only the largest element can be deleted first. Suppose an array with the elements 78, 60, 50, 40 and 30 in the same order, so insertion can be done with the same sequence, but the order of deleting the element is 78. Reverse of ascending order Doubly ended queue, here insertion and deletion can be done from both the ends of the queue, either from the front or rear. It can be used as a palindrome checker. If we read the string from the both the ends, then the string would be the same. It can also be used for both stack and queue, as it allows the insertion and deletion operation on both the ends. It can be considered as a stack because the stack follows the LIFO. Last in first out principle, in which insertion and deletion both can be performed only from the one end. And in DQ, it is possible to perform both insertion and deletion from one end. And DQ does not follow FIFO principle. Here is the representation of the doubly ended queue or DQ. As we already discussed that the insertion and deletion can be done from the both the end. You can observe in the diagram that Q is having the elements 78, 60, 50, 40 and 30. And we can perform the deletion and insertion from the both the ends, both from front and rear. Implementation of Q. There are two ways of implementing the Q. Implementation using array and implementation using linked list. Array representation of queue. We can easily represent the queue by using the linear arrays, using two variables that is front and rear that are implemented in case of every queue. Front and rear variables point to the position from where insertion and deletions are performed in the queue. Initially, the value of the front of the queue is minus 1 which represents an empty queue. Here is the array representation of the queue. You can see in the figure the queue of the characters forming an English word data. Since no deletion is performed in the queue till now, therefore the value of the front remains 0. 
the value of red increases by 1 every time an insertion is performed in the queue. After inserting an element into the queue, the queue will look like this. The value of the red will become 4 while the value of front remains the same. After deleting an element, the queue of the front will increase from 0 to 1. The queue will look like this. Linked list implementation of queue. As we discussed the drawbacks of array implementation, it cannot be used for large scale applications where the queue are implemented. One of the alternative of the array implementation is linked list implementation of queue. The storage requirement of linked representation of a queue with n elements is big O of n, while the time requirement for the operation is big O of 1. In a linked queue, each node of the queue consists of two parts that is data part and link part. Each element of the queue points to the immediate next element in the memory. Here is the representation of the linked queue. In linked queue, there are two pointers maintained in the memory that is front pointer and rear pointer. The front pointer contains the address of the starting element of the queue while the rear pointer contains the address of the last element of the queue. Insertion and deletions are performed at rear and front end respectively. If front and rear both are null, it indicates that the queue is empty. There are two basic operations which can be implemented on linked queues. The operations are insertion and deletion. Insertion operation. The insert operation append the queue by adding an element to the end of the queue. The new element will be the last element of the queue. Firstly, allocate the memory for the new node pointer by using the following statement. Pointer is equal to struct node asterisk malloc size of struct node. There can be two scenarios of inserting the new node pointer into the link queue. In the first scenario, we insert the element into an empty queue. In this case, the condition front equal to null becomes true. Now the new element will be added as the only element of the queue and the next pointer of the pointer and rear point both will point to null. In the second case, the queue contains more than one element. The condition front equal to null becomes false. In this scenario, we need to update the end pointer rear so that the next pointer of the rear point to the new node pointer. Since this is a linked queue, hence we also need to make the rear pointer to point to the newly added node pointer. We also need to make the next pointer of the rear point to the null. Deletion operation removes the element that is first inserted among all the queue elements. Firstly, we need to check whether the list is empty or not. The condition front equal to null becomes true if the list is empty. In this case, we simply write under flow on the console and exit. Otherwise, we will delete the element that is printed by the pointer front. To do this, copy the node pointed by the front pointer into the pointer. Now shift the front pointer. Point to its next node and free the node pointed by the node pointer. Now we will see the applications of queues. Used as waiting list for single shared resource like printer, disk, CPU. Queues are used in asynchronous transfer of data. Queues are used as buffers in the most of the applications like MP3 media player, CD player, etc. They are also used to maintain the playlist in the media player in order to add and remove songs from the playlist. Queues are used in operating system for handling interrupts. For detailed notes and programs, you can install DSC application from the Google Play Store or from the link given in the description below. Please like this video and subscribe to our channel if you have not subscribed yet. And don't forget to hit on bell icon to get notified whenever we post new videos. Thank you for watching. If you have any queries, please let us know in the comment section below.